Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Dubai. You can see by the look on my face, I am feeling really, really good. I am officially 10 days post-show and yeah, I just feel more myself again. If you already follow me on Instagram, you guys know how I'm feeling, how I'm training, the food I'm eating. I also shared it with you in my most recent video, the previous video where I showed you my reverse diet and the approach I'm taking into coming out of my prep season. But today I wanted to vlog and just kind of share with you guys how I'm feeling, take you through my day to day. It is Saturday the 16th of October. It is three days before my birthday. And yeah, I've got lots to update you guys on. So it's quite early in the morning. I've checked in already. I posted my check-in video to Instagram. I'm going to insert it here so you can see what I'm looking like. My weight is holding at 154 pounds, just about and that is roughly 10 pounds above my most recent stage weight. Now, across the course of my prep, my weight did change across different kind of shows, and my lowest it ever went to was 141, but my most recent show, it was 143.5, I believe, which is why, obviously, I wasn't as pleased with my package, my, my stage weight wasn't as light, I wasn't as lean, um, but I've had my stage photos back, I'm really happy with the overall shape and structure that I brought to that American stage. I'll insert those photos now so you can see. And the difference between this show in America and probably my favorite show in Portugal, the Amateur Olympia, is where you can really see the difference in condition, the lines, my midsection, and all that kind of thing. But I talked about that on my previous vlog. I know that what we brought to America was probably about 80% my best due to how my body was feeling, how long I was on prep, and the fact that I was just pretty fucked, to be honest. But I'm now in my kind of reverse diet. I'm now in my kind of post-show recovery phase, and I'm feeling really good. My food is nice and high. My sleep has improved lots. And I'm just able to just function just so much better. I'm not afraid to gain a little body fat or gain some weight. I know that it's what my body needs and I am so, so here for it. I also posted a question box on my Instagram story and said that I would run a Q&A today. So I'm gonna dip in and out of this vlog, share some of those questions, answer them for you guys. But right now I need to go and attend to check-ins because it's Saturday, my prep girls are checking in. I've got Lucy competing today. And so I'll pick you guys back up probably before I go and train and I'll answer a few questions then. Just preparing my pre-workout meal, but I thought I would show you <laughs> the changes to our whiteboard. So we've got my diet and we've got Darren's diet. Which one would you prefer? I've got all the fun foods. And Darren's got pretty basic, but a lot of food. Wow. And my pre-workout meal is a full bagel. This bagel is the pumpkin spice flavored bagel with 30 grams of almond butter and 20 grams of whey blended. And I think that's probably the main difference now with my diet is I only have one serving of whey pre-workout. All my protein comes from whole food sources. And yes, I did pack a whole ton of bagels and brought them back from America. So I've got the pumpkin spice one, I've got the cinnamon raisin one, I've got the blueberry muffin one, and I also packed this brown sugar cinnamon swell bread, because I've heard that this is absolutely amazing. So if I do have a refeed or a treat, or I want to make some like French toast, you best believe I'll be using that. So yeah. Just finished at the gym and I did an awesome pull session. And it was like a pull session that was on my terms, like no training plan, no logbook. I just went in and was like, right, what do I fancy doing? So I did like straight arm push downs, close grip row, I did a high seated hammer, single arm movement. I did rack pulls. I haven't done rack pulls in flipping forever. And it was just so, so nice to not have that pressure of prep, to have a log book. And that's what I've been doing since show. Like I've been going to train when I feel like training and I've been picking a muscle group that I want to focus on and just kind of freestyling it, which has been so, so nice. Um, and once this kind of recovery period is complete, I would say probably after my birthday week, we do have plans to 
focus on a training program that's going to work on the areas I need to improve which I'll probably share with you guys in a future vlog but my training's all done I feel really really good I need to head home now get my post-workout meal and I'll probably pick you guys up to answer some of your questions that have come through from Instagram so funny I'm not on prep but I still feel really hungry post-workout and always inhale that meal so so lush cream of rice pineapple and jam so now that I've had my post-workout meal I'm gonna answer a few of these questions very quickly and then I need to go and crack on with the rest of my check-ins and check on Lucy because she's competing today so what's your macro breakdown at the moment I'm currently on around 350 grams of carbs, 70 grams of fat, and about 160 grams of protein, which equates to around about 2,700 calories. When was the hardest time on prep, and when was the best? That's an easy one. The best time on prep is at the beginning, when you are full of energy, you're excited about your training program, you're making progress each week, your body is really responsive, you're absolutely loving life. I'd say the first kind of 12 weeks, 14 weeks of prep were awesome. Like I wasn't food focused, I had lots of energy, my sleep was really great. The hardest time was probably towards the end where I was kind of the back end of prep and 30 plus weeks. That was really, really tough on my body, on my mind. Yeah. What are the muscles that you are going to focus on to improve and your strategy? So, as I mentioned, I'm currently more relaxed with training at the moment, but once this recovery period is completed, we do have a plan in place and I'm going to be training five days a week, as I did before with two rest days. I'm going to be doing two leg sessions, two pull sessions and one push session. I would say the areas we're going to focus on is my quad sweep, because it's an area that's really hard for me to develop and takes a long time to grow and definitely my posterior chain because when we implemented pull sessions into my training like that came on loads and we want that to be a really strong um, area on my physique. Shoulders and arms are not really a massive focus for me so that's why push is going to be just once a week. Has the number on the scales ever affected you? If so, what are some of the tips to train yourself? And there's a part two to this. Um, train yourself to not worry about the scale number, particularly when coming out of a deficit. I would say over the years, this has got a lot better to deal with. My first ever season of competing, I think, for me and for anybody is when you get your body to that kind of lean stage weight and you see your physique like that it's very hard to kind of tackle that reverse and get used to seeing your body in its off season or when it's in its kind of maintenance phase because you've seen your body at its absolute leanness and the best it's ever going to look and that's the picture you've always got in your mind so when you see your body change the opposite way it can be a bit of a like a head fuck for sure um, so the numbers on the scales used to bother me, but I think over the years, competing several times, knowing that I need to take my body up to kind of maintenance, put myself in a calorie surplus, get my body fat back up, get my hormones back on track. I think it's just a case of understanding that you go through seasons as a bodybuilder and ultimately it comes down to you living this lifestyle year round. If you enter a prep and it's just to look good on stage and then you go back to kind of a different lifestyle then i suppose it's much harder because you're not really seeing it as like different phases so you're in a prep phase you're in an improvement phase so it's kind of you have to embrace all the different phases so i think my biggest tip would be to understand that you're just in a different phase and just switch your mindset and be like okay so i've done my prep i got my physique looking absolutely mega and now i'm going to work on improving that and I'm going to accept the fact that my body fat's going to come up, I'm not going to look as lean and all that kind of thing. 
would ZMA, melatonin or any other supplements have helped you sleep on prep? Trust me, I tried them all. <laughs> they did to an extent at the start, but when my body was just so wrecked towards the end, nothing was gonna help me sleep. I was just in a right old state, but yes, I have used them. They do help normally, and I probably keep them in during my improvement season as well. Last question, and then I do need to go and get on with some work. Have you noticed any differences with your skin when you are on or off prep, and if any? And then there's a part two to this question as well. What can you do about it? I would say at the start of prep, my skin actually improves because I'm eating really clean, wholesome foods, my diet is good, my, my training is optimal. Like I said, at the start of prep, I'm feeling great. So my skin actually glows. Um, towards the end of prep, when I'm feeling battered, yeah, it gets really bad. And then off show after show, like show day makeup, tan on your skin, all that kind of stuff. I think affects um, like what my skin looks like. Like I have very oily skin anyway, and I've suffered with acne before in the past, and I've used courses of Roaccutane and things like that to kind of dry up my skin. Um, but like you can see now, I've still got the remnants of like dry, flaky skin. So what I'm doing now post-show is really focusing on not just body recovery, but equally kind of just looking after myself like Last week, when we came back from Dubai, I went and had a facial, like a deep cleansing facial. You know, I'm, I invest in like good quality creams, cleansing treatments, all that sort of thing. So I would say, if you're on a prep and you notice those things happening, then just invest in looking after your body on the outside as much as you do on the inside. So that's it from me for now. I'm gonna go and crack on with some work and I will catch you guys a bit later. It's just coming up to three and I've been going through all my client check-ins, all my prep girls have been responded to, but I've made a start on all my lifestyle clients as well because I've got so much work to do tomorrow for my new website, which I'll tell you about in a second. But look at Lucy, she looks amazing. Her third show of the year, she's just been on stage, she got through to finals and we're waiting on the results. And I'm just preparing my next meal, which I absolutely love on my plan and I'm gonna show you that in a second. The only trouble is, I have to wait so long for the air fryer. 16 or 17 minutes to cook my amazing crispy potatoes. And I'm definitely getting a lot hungrier on this food. And this is what we are working with. One small tortilla wrap, avocado, chicken, some salad. <laughs> You can see I like to pile it high, so the mission is going to be trying to actually wrap this. And then 150 grams of raw white potato cooked in the air fryer with some low calorie spray and some seasoning. So let's try and wrap this bad boy. Nailed it. Now all I've got to try and do is pick it up and eat it before it splits apart. But honestly, this is one of my favourite meals on my plan right now. And I love having this variety back. Just coming up to half past four and I've managed to get through almost all of my check-ins, well, everybody that's checked in on time, and I've sent all their feedback and their link videos. Now, normally I do this on a Sunday um, and they have a 24 hour response, but I've got so much work to do for my website that I wanted to get ahead of these. And also, sometimes it's nice to give them an early feedback and check-in response. So my new website that's going live on the 1st of November is my new business with Bex website and um, I am buzzing for this. It's been in the making for so long and with prep just taking over my life it's been something that we've had to postpone and I've had to kind of do gradually but now we've come to the point where I'm ready to launch it and there's gonna be two main aspects to it. There'll be one section which explains like bespoke one-to-one -one business coaching and then the other section that will have the online Business with Bex online coaching course. And it's basically tailored to anybody that's a newbie online coach or anyone that wants to become an online coach. There's four modules. Each module has four lessons in it. And that's what I've been designing over the last few days. And by my birthday on the 19th, I need to have all of the content ready to go in a folder for my web designer, Farah, to build the website. So three days to go. The course is all built, the content's all there, but tomorrow what I need to do is I need to film videos, audio clips that can go and support the lessons, and I've got to get content as well. So I've got to be in my office, I've got to get down and take some photos of me here so that we can kind of fill out the website and kind of make it look pretty and stuff. So check-ins are pretty much all done. 
The other thing that I wanted to share with you is that my girl Lucy, who competed today, came fourth. She did so, so well. It's her third show ever, and she plays fourth. I didn't play fourth in my first season. Like, that's mega. I'm so, so excited for her. So I've been on the phone to her as well at the same time, but now it's time for me to go and finally shower. I'm still in my gym clothes. What an absolute wretched woman I am. But I'm gonna go and shower now, get myself into some chilled clothes. I've got a Zoom call with all of my prep girls, and then I've got a massage booked for this evening, which I cannot wait for. Time for my next meal, and it's my lean steak mince, which I've kind of taken to putting in like, whoa, steamy, in like a lettuce kind of boat taco thing, and then my rice, and then just some mixed veggies. So I'll eat this up now, and then I'll answer those last few questions. That meal is absolutely delicious. In fact, I say that about all of my meals, my plan. I like them all. So let's get to these last few questions and then I need to get myself ready to go to the salon and get my massage. Okay, um, let's have a look. How much cardio do you do in your off season? I tend to do anywhere between 20 to 40 minutes simply because I like being active first thing in the morning. So I really like getting the sweat on. I like moving my body before my breakfast. And I think it's really good for my mind, for my digestion. Um, so at the moment, I'm just doing 30 minutes list on the cross trainer. Do you genuinely believe that all of the books you have read during prep helped you push through? What a great question. Do you know what? I'd say the majority of them, yes. And I think it's not necessarily because they're targeted towards someone that's going through a prep, but more so when you're on prep, you're hyper aware and sensitive of everything. So when you read something, you instantly believe it's about you. You kind of relate it to what you're going through. Well, that's what I feel anyway. So a lot of the books that I read, I was like, yes, this is related to me, my prep, my business. Um, and a lot of them most definitely pushed me through. Um, Relentless by Tim Grover. Um, Winning, the sequel to that. Um, Grit by Angela Duckworth, like the list goes on. Join my Bex book club. There's tons in there that I've reviewed. Um, how do you read a sudden gain of three kg weight when the calories in the workout are exactly the same? I'm not sure what you mean. Um, I'm guessing that you mean three kg has increased, but everything else is the same. It could be due to stress, it could be hormonal. Um, there's lots of things. It could be inflammation. You could be ill. Um, I suffer with stress and weight gain for sure. Like for example, last year when I competed, I was so anxious about getting my COVID test coming back negative that literally three days before I flew, I was holding two kg of stress water weight and I was freaking out. And Darren was like, you're stressed out. Once the test comes back negative, you will be relaxed, it'll be fine. And lo and behold, it did. Test came back negative, I knew we'd be able to fly. And literally the next day I dropped two kg in weight. So. Uh, last and final question. Oh, this is such a great one. Backstories on your fur babies. A little something about their personality. It's funny you should ask that. I literally have just cleaned up dog shit from the front of the house. Right by the front door. Whilst I was on my prep Zoom call, the dog decided he was going to shit in the house and eat it. So his personality, he's a little pickle. He is just coming up to a year old. He's got quite a personality. Um, he's still a big softy, so stitchy, um, and I think it's probably because when they were really young, like when Stitch was a kitten and obviously when Milo was a pup, I'm very cuddly, I'm very affectionate with animals, so they're both very kind of docile, like, although he's a bit of a pickle and he might poop and do silly things, he honestly is the sweetest pup and he loves attention, loves being around company, so does Stitch. Stitch is very talkative and chatty, but the backstory behind them, Stitch, <laughs> Stitch was actually a pair. He came with his sister, so it was Lilo and Stitch. And they were a birthday present from hubby four years ago, I wanna say, something like that, four or five years ago, when we were, when we were, when we were in our other apartment. Um, but Lilo, unfortunately, she passed away. Uh, she had like a heart attack and then just died, which was really, really sad. Um, so then we just had Stitch and then Milo, he's come from a dog breeder out here in Dubai and we got him last, no we didn't, we got him, we got him in January 
and he was just eight weeks old. So yeah, his birthday is coming up in November. And he's actually, I think it's November the 17th. So yeah, that's the backstory behind the pups. But I'm going to close off this video here. I'm gonna go and get myself off to the salon, go and get a massage. Um, thank you so much for watching. I hope you found it valuable, useful. As you can see, I'm back to my normal happy back self. I'm feeling really good. Um, food increase, sleep is better. Just things are moving in the right direction and I'm totally okay with gaining weight. I'm totally okay with looking a bit fluffy. I'm fine not seeing abs. <laughs> um, I'm just happy to be feeling good again after feeling so wrecked for so long and my head just being completely gone. I feel like my head is screwed back on and I'm feeling great. So thank you for watching. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe if you're not already and I'll catch you in the next vlog soon which will probably be my birthday vlog all of next week. So I'll see you soon guys. Bye.